Hello and welcome back. This is Sandra Hart at Life Over 60. Today I'm going to have a conversation about life, about women and aging, and maybe we're going to do a little bit of facial yoga. What a week it has been. Thank you for all of your wonderful comments and you know, it's almost getting overwhelming and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to answer all of them but I surely do read all of them and I'll keep trying to answer all of them. I almost wasn't going to make a video this week because to be honest with you <laughs> I'm a little overwhelmed and for some reason I've been doing a lot of interviews with people and, and I just um kind of feel a little burnt out. Uh, I was going to take maybe a week off so that I could do a little re relaxing and restoration of my system. Uh, but here I am. I really miss you when I don't see you, so I'm, I'm back. The other day I got an email from the Tamron Hall talk show. And uh, they asked, uh, they watch my videos, they like my videos, and they wanted to know whether or not I would be interested in participating in a show that they are doing about women and aging. Well, I got back to them, and that resulted in a about two-hour conversation with one of the producers, and then we set up a time where we could Zoom and, and do the interview. So that happened yesterday. And it was about two hours of editing, not editing, but of talking and sharing and giving them giving me instruction on, you know, how to proceed, whatever. But anyway, so, and, and I'm going to be interviewing uh, Paulina Bren, who has written a book about the Barbizon Hotel. And that's a very famous hotel in New York that, when I was younger, used to be an all-women's hotel. And a lot of very important celebrities started their careers out there, but it just so happens that when I first came to New York, I lived at the Barbizon for two years. So uh, I'm going to be speaking with her later on, so it's going to be reversed. I'm going to be interviewing her, and she's not interviewing me. But also, um, I would like for you to go over and visit Stowe Good, Karen, and Stowe have a really interesting channel. They do mo um, motivation and they are Nashville songwriters. I've done an interview with them before, but they interviewed me um, a couple of weeks ago and they did the nicest thing. They wrote a song to me, especially for me, and it really touched me. I started to cry a little bit because it was, it was just so, so sweet and so nice and so kind of them. Uh, I'm going to put the link down below and you can go visit them and, and watch that particular episode because they're such, such nice women. They're mature like we are and um, they have a YouTube channel and they really want it to grow and I would love for you to go over and, and try to support them. Anyway, this is a burned out uh, conversation today. But it is the end of Women's History Month. And when we think about, about it, when I started out my career uh, as a romper room teacher, of course, all the teachers were women. There were no men teachers. And the environment that I was in was very supportive. 
uh, in Baltimore, Burt Claster and his wife Nancy and his daughter Sally. They were all so supportive of me while I was doing the show. But then I got an offer uh, from a television station because I had a journalism background and television experience, so both of those things made me uh, a candidate to be in the newsroom and to have a talk show. And uh, I, so after I was a little tired of Romper Room, it was kind of the same thing all the time, and I did, did want to, you know, go move forward in my career. And so I took the job as an anchor woman, and um, I was in the newsroom. But I was the, and I may have told this story before, but when back when I was doing television, all the news anchors were men. I think Barbara Walters had just started to be uh, on television in on the Today Show, which was kind of a news show. But they were all men, and all of these men were came from the newspaper industry, so they were very hard-nosed, tough news guys. <laughs> and here I was, this young woman, a part of the news team, the only female around. And the first thing that they did when I came in, they were so nice to me, but they asked me to make their coffee. Yeah, to make their coffee. So in their minds, that was what women were good for. Women were just around to make their needs satisfied. Well, I thought, hey, that's, that's not right. That's not what I came here for. You know, I came here as a journalist, and I want, I want to do the news. So do you know what I did? I went in the little area where we had coffee, and I made <laughs> the worst coffee in the world. I made it so strong that it would stand up a hair on any man's head or maybe make their hair fall out. It was so bad. And guess what? They never asked me to make coffee again. <laughs> So that was kind of the way that I was introduced to the news world. But today, it's such a different story. The young women have so many more opportunities, but it is because of people like Barbara Walters and maybe me in my little area, but women who were not afraid to stand up, be recognized, and have their voices heard. And I'm sure if you were in the professional business community and you are 50, 60, 70, or maybe my age, and you had a career outside of your home, you may have experienced that type of mindset, and, and I almost want to call it discrimination, of us and our voices, and what... We were our place in life was to be. Now, if you were a nurse or a secretary, and you were in a doctor, a teacher, if you were in those fields, you were already accepted as a professional and regarded for your experience. But in the world of news, entertainment, and television, we were not. We really were not because it was a man's world, and those of us who stepped in really had to work hard to have our voices heard. This month, I think, is a wonderful month because we can recognize all of the women who came before us who, 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 who were able to uh, get us to be able to vote, who will be able to stand up for our rights as women, and to keep us from being invisible. And that's one of the topics that we talked about on Tamron's show, is the feeling that so many women get, and they're made to feel this way, that they are invisible. Once they reach 40 or 50, all of a sudden, uh, their voices aren't heard, and they don't matter. As a matter of fact, my daughter was talking to me the other day, and she said, oh, Mother, there's a, um, a website you can go to and they need people to do surveys. Companies will contact you 
and then they will ask you questions about products. They'll send you products, what you like, what you don't like, and they really value your opinion. But do you know what she told me? Anyone over 55 would be knocked out because their opinions don't matter. Now, isn't that crazy at this day and age? Their opi our opinions don't matter once we get beyond 40 years old. Well, you know, that was really offended by that. And I thought, we have made such great strides, but maybe we haven't really come full circle yet. I, I really had uh, such a fun time. It was a little bit different when we were doing her show because I couldn't just converse like I'm doing with you today. There was a lot of stopping and starting and places where they could edit, and things like that. But I'm hoping that it comes out all right. I um, think it's going to be on Friday, April the 2nd, but they sent me conflicting information. They said Friday, April the 1st, so I don't know whether it's on, going to be aired on Thursday or Friday, but what I'll do in my community page, on my, if you are a subscriber, on my community page, I will put the date that it's going to be aired, and I also I will put a link down below that covers all of the United States, and so you'll know what channel Tamron Hall's show uh, airs on, if you don't watch her already. But she's really a very interesting woman with a journalistic and reporter's background. So she really asks a lot of good questions. While I was doing the Zoom interview with the Tamron Hall show, I was also had my equipment set up so that I could film myself being interviewed. And when I played back some of that footage, I thought, wow, you know, <laughs> I really should start back on a regular basis doing my facial routine because during COVID I've been kind of lax in routines and doing what I used to do. I have a video that I'll put the link down below on my facial exercises, the pressure points that I do, and it really does help. But in the last month I started doing facial yoga, but I have not been really um, very faithful with it. And after watching myself kind of from the side at a different angle, I thought, wow, you know, girl, you'd better start doing those facial areas to tone up this, this part of your face right here. So right now, as a part of this video, so I feel like I'm not completely wasting your time, I'm going to show you what facial exercises that I do that are facial yoga, just three of them to help tighten this area right up here. I don't know if that is your problem area, but as it is with me, if I have any areas in my face, it's uh, because I have a round face, it's this area right here. Facial yoga is really good if you are tense. Maybe if you are driving the car for long hours or if you're sitting at a computer and you find your shoulders and this area all being very tense in your neck. So what I'm going to show you today really helps relieve some of that tension and helps firm up the jawline just a little bit. Facial yoga, I find, is also very relaxing. It's emotionally or psychologically good for me. But anyway, what you can do, the first exercise that I'm going to tell you, what you can do is to, you put your, you know, put your shoulders back, put, put your finger right here, make uh, your mouth in it like an O, not very attractive, but O, and then put your head back, and don't forget to breathe while you're doing this, O, put your head back, well, I can feel that, I can feel that tightening, I can feel all that all the way through, O, and put your head back, and that really does release all of the tension here. The next one that I am going to do is that try to envision just stretching your neck up and tightening your jaw. Now this is what I do 
all the time and this really helps me but I never associated it with facial yoga but just envision just stretch 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 your neck high and while you're doing that tighten these jaw muscles here just just tighten release and breathe stretch and tighten just if you can just in your mind just control these muscles here and tighten once again stretch as high as you can put your head back and I put your head up it's just as though as I said before like you have a string the same as I do with posture just tighten tighten and just tighten this as tight as possible. Oh, I can really feel that. See, I'm out of shape. I haven't been doing it for a while. And the last one is so much fun. It's called kissing the sky. And what you do is you purse, push your mouth like this and ah, put your head back, purse your lips, and just pretend that you're kissing the sky or Pierce Brosnan or, or, or Liam Neeson, so and so, or your husband. Just up, 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 purse your lips and ah, you're kissing the sky. Aren't those easy? Those are just three little easy yoga exercises that I have learned in the, in the past month. But to be honest with you, I've been crazy busy so I just haven't done it as much but after looking at myself from a different angle I thought wow <laughs> you really need to get back to your pressure points and your facial yoga all right thank you so much for joining me I, I hope I haven't wasted a few minutes of your time today but I just love having each and every one of you with me and next week I'll be back on a regular schedule and we'll do a really honest, regular conversation video. Take care and do something wonderful for yourself. Of course, share the love. Thank you again. I love having each and every one of you. It's, you mean so much to me. And we're a village and we're going to all do this pro-aging thing together.